we're Kat and Andrew, and this Ford Transit van is soon going to become our tiny home in Wales. Follow along as we attempt to convert this empty shell into a livable space with wind and water and electricity. We're pretty handy people, but we've never taken on such a huge task like this before, so wish us luck. Now that we have finally finished the sub floor, we have a floor! It's time to insulate the walls and get them ready for tongue and So, finally getting to work on something that's not the floor, which I'm really excited about. And we're putting this stuff up on the walls. It's sound deadening, so it's trying to reduce the sound that the, like the fan's gonna make when we're driving around by the metal rattling. So um, we've got all this off YouTube, so we'll put the links below for everyone we've actually learned this off. The whole point is when you hit this, it rattles, but when you put this stuff up, the rattles like really reduced. So we've got the entire van to do. Never let this accidentally stick to itself. I think I may have ruined it a little. See if it still works. That's it for the sound and then didn't really work for this panel. It kind of felt a bit useless. I think it's just so big that we're not going to stop that one from vibrating and I don't want to waste any more panels on it. Yeah, I did. Now that the floor is finished, we're back on to insulating the walls of the van. So we're going to be putting up dodo fluff um, in all their weird gravities and I don't know, Andrew calls it a weird name, isothermo board on the bigger apps. If you're wondering, what is Dodo Fluff? Kat from the past is here to explain. So, in between the panels in the van where we're not going to be able to put insulation board, we're putting this stuff called Dodo Fleece. It's made of recycled plastic bottles. And we're using this instead of glass fibre because glass fibre just seems nasty to work with and not bothered with that. The only thing about this stuff is it's really hard to cut. You can't really rip it or else you can't get a like nice straight edge to help put it into wherever you're putting it. So I'm just using the scissors and it's taken a long time. Pretty much just going to be cutting dodo fleece now for the rest of the day. So, to the GoPro. Do not fall against this wall. Oh gosh, yeah. What did he fall again? Demon pins. Demon pins, which are gonna hold the insulation board on. It's more just to hold them stable than anything else.
back working on the floor today. We're finishing off the insulation of paper barrier and I'm trying to do a paper barrier around the wheel well which has turned out to be harder than I thought it might be. As you can see here, I've tried to put this tape but it just keeps snapping. Every time you put a little bit of weight on this or you try to push it in, the join here snaps, so it's really just going to be a holy barrier, <laughs> like you can see there. So what we're going to try do is use this stuff. It's called um, Tinsulate. So this will be going on the walls of the van or near insulation to create the paper barrier. So what I'm going to try to do is wrap this around the weld and secure it. Wrap it around the weld and secure it in place. It'll be hard because it is windy and as you can see there it keeps blowing away on me. Happy St. Patrick's Day! The entire country has basically put itself into isolation. All the parades have been cancelled, so we've decided to come down to the van and try to get a bit of work done. Where we are, there's no one around, so everything should be fine. Today I'm going to work on using this tinselite stuff. Basically silvery um, insulation and give our fan basically a skirting board of it. Put a layer of tinselay around the bottom. You let it fold under, lay on the floor. And then when you tape it here, it means when this wood finally goes up against here, there's a nice layer of tinselay to all the way around. And this should hopefully mean that the edge of this wood, if it does rub up against, shouldn't cut through this tape because it's underneath. Instead, it would have to actually cut through this tinselay, which I think would be quite hard for it to do. the top furring strips have the holes marked. I'm going to drill these out with an arbor to make a little gap because the self-topping screws aren't very good. And then we're going to put them straight in through the inner frame with self-drilling metal screws. This is how it's going to be this is what you think of me It's going down like I told you This is how it's gonna be I'll be the last man standing here I'm not going anywhere It's going down like I told you I'll be the last man standing here Screwed these in They're pretty tight There's a bit of slicker flex behind them Same here Same here So this last one in the corner is kind of awkward because of the shape. Um, I thought about putting one here, but they're, the outer layer of skin on the door rail is very, very close behind there, so I don't want to risk penetrating it. What I did instead was I cut this shape. It's kind of a wedge with a wedge on it. And I'll try to put it there. And then the screws can go in 
through this bit, which is quite a lot thicker, even just that distance. Um, so there's no risk of me breaking the outer skin of the van or the door rail. And I'm about to make it clear It's going down like I told you I'm the baddest mother up in here I'm gonna rock you I'm gonna rock you I'm gonna rock you That is not going anywhere. So what we have done here and what we need to do to the entire van is put up these wooden battens all around um, they're usually referred to as fur and strips and what these do is give us somewhere to put the wooden cladding in and screw to this piece of wood instead of directly into the metal so after we do that we put this isotherm foil up between them and then we're going to tape over with this tape and it's going to create our paper bar Few hours later, one half of the van is done in terms of moisture barrier, and the other half is just about framed out. I just gotta do under the window, um, and Cat is quickly catching up on me on the moisture barrier. This cable you see is the main cable running to the brake lights, so it had to run in uninterrupted. That's just off the old roof lights, and so we left gaps everywhere for it to run. That's a gap. Uh, this joist is for the overhead cabinets in the kitchen, so it's extra strong, it's bolted in. Uh, there were bolt holes in the frame for us to use, which are pre-threaded. The rest of it is screwed in with these little demon screws from hell. finished insulating and favorite barrier the walls she's so shiny shine on, shine on. So shiny. don't waste a second of time we now that the floor and walls are prepped we can move on to the next big step in the conversion but that's for another time thanks for watching bye